1983. But what a lot of people don't realize is he came back in 1984, a year later, and he set a track record going a mile to 16th and 140 and 4 fifths, which still stands today. That was his last race. He broke a bone and just put it at the head of the stretch. I saw the stride Before tap. He finished. Came home on three legs and set a track record that still stands. Wow. wow. He was all heart. And he produced horses that's heart, like. Uh, that horse Valley Road is out of the Peter Testimony Mayor. I mean, you'll see his name coming up in pedigrees as a brood mare sire now. But he was, uh, he's what makes people go into this game. He was by a $500 stud out of a $500 mare. We syndicated him for $5.2 million in 1984. And, uh, of course, in those days, the market was sky high, you know. And uh, he'll be buried someday down by that church right next to his mother, that's where she's buried. He is amazing looking. He looks like an old wizard from Lord of the Rings or something like that. If you'll, the Monday, my partner's widow, is coming by to see him. She hasn't been here for a couple of years. She's in her 90s now. But he's, uh, he's uh, he'll prance. He goes out next to my house every day. He goes out and patty every day. He never raced on any medication. Huh. And uh, he's uh, he's really lived a long life. You see how he's gotten sway back, of course, and he has Cushing's where he doesn't lose his coat in the summer like he should. But he's happy. He's healthy. Doesn't he amaze you, though? Yes, he does. He, I mean, what do you think? What? So he was 83, so he's born in 80. Yes, sir. So he's 31. Yeah. So what is that in human years? How does that translate? I don't know, but I know there was a trivia question in the Blood Horse a couple months ago, and he is the oldest living classic winner. Tremendous. He's strangely beautiful. This is Go for Jen. He won the Kentucky Derby in 1994. He was, uh, Nick Zito trained him. I didn't train him. He's, uh, he belongs in a partnership now with Benita Farm and Joe Cornaccia. Who, and Cornaccia had a, has never not had him. He had him the whole time. Yes, he was in partnership with Cochran, and then we, we bought Cochran's half out. They were going to send him to Europe, and Mr. Cornacci didn't want to do that. Now, I did some research before I came out here, and Deputa Testimony is the oldest living classic winner there is. This is the second oldest Kentucky Derby winner still alive. Oh, really? I didn't know that. And the oldest is Strike the Gold, who was also trained by Nick Zito. Right. So that's pretty cool. He's getting to be one of these sure. scholar guys. How cool is it, or how... You know, prestigious is it to have a derby winner and, a, and the Preakness winner side by side like this? I think it's very prestigious, and particularly here in Maryland, not in Kentucky. And uh, uh, what we've really been trying to do is get a Belmont winner on the other side <laughs> so we can cover the whole thing. But, uh, but I think, or I would think, that there would still be an allure to some people to breed to a Kentucky Derby winner. Yes, and uh, you know it seems like uh, uh, his. You know he wanted two, he wanted three, one on the dirt. A lot of people say his offspring are better on the grass, but of course they don't run the Derby on the grass. Right. And uh, it's a market that stinks him when you win that race. There's only one of them a year. It, I guess Gopher Gin was a success when he started here, but just the whole situation in Maryland hurt him. The whole situation in Maryland has hurt him. If you look at the stats in Maryland, he'll be like 12th from last year. Um, and, you know, for a number of mares bred, uh, he's, you know, he's held his own and is, I think, still a bargain at 2,500. But uh, you know, people tend to go to a new sire more than a proven sire. They're proven to some extent, but we're all optimistic in this game and people think well that new stallion is starting out for 2000 he's going to be 20,000 next year and so they go <laughs> uh, they tend to go more for the new crop of freshman yeah. sires yeah 
just part of the game. It seems that there's an infirmity in the thoroughbred these days and they don't run as much and it's a big topic of conversation that they're, they can't run as many races, they're more brittle and yet people, like you just said, go to the newer stallions but some of these older stallions that were double tough might be the place to go. You said yourself, deputed testimony, never ran on medication. Well, he's lived to be 30 years old, and everybody who's followed Maryland Racing knows that they were as rock solid as they come, his offspring. So maybe it would be a good idea to go back to some of these old steins and take a second look. Well, I think so. I mean, I, you know, I think there's overemphasis, particularly, let's talk about Lasix. The, uh, I had a horse for Mrs. Valentine many years ago, and you know how I like to tell stories. She had a little ledge filly she named Love a Story for me. And she had bought a share in Spend a Buck. And when Spend a Buck won the, won the Garden State Stakes, he bled a bucket after the race. Hmm. And this filly was a bleeder. And I said, well, certainly you're not going to breed that mare to that stallion. But she did. Years later, one of her son-in-laws was training the first offspring. He came to me one day and he said, You know, I ran that filly out of that mare you liked so much, and don't you know she bled? <laughs> now, you know, but the fact that we're breeding to horses that were dependent upon Lasex and dependent upon medications, they will produce horses that are dependent upon the same thing. There's no doubt in my mind about it. The fruit does not fall far from the tree. And that's why... I like to breed so many mares in Peter testimony because I know his wind was good, I know his soundness was good, and uh, uh, I, I think we're, we're weakening the breed and that's part of the reason why you're seeing fewer starts per horses. Now bear in mind, the inbreeding is, we've got enough centuries inbreeding that we've refined the bones, the, the horse's kind of bone is not as round, as thick diameter right. as it used to be, uh, with our silly craze for track record times, we, we're making the tracks harder uh, because the average American 16 year old weighs 20 pounds more than he did 20 years ago. Now we're raising the weight scale. Uh, we're doing everything to keep us from longevity from numerous starts, you know? <laughs> and so it's a, you know, it's a, it's a multifaceted thing, but, I, and I think some of it is there's a, you know, there's a, there's a lot of emphasis on, uh, big supermarket type trainers, you know, they have 300 head yeah, of horses and, yeah. and they, uh, uh, they're concentrating on the cream, it's come to the top and uh, uh, they're scared, they're protective to run them back next week, you right, know, right, right. Their, uh, it's, uh, their values on those ones uh, become so great for stallion potential, even in today's market, that uh, I think a lot of it is hesitancy on a trainer, I mean, I can remember at the half hours in Maryland, they only ran 10 days. You try to get an opening day, so you might get three starts in during the meet. You, you know what I mean? Right. And uh, the overnights came out the day before the race, and the scratch time was the day of, and you were trying to get to run there three times before you left town. Do you still think there, in this age of what you just called the supermarket trainer, there's still a place in the thoroughbred racing world in this country for people like yourself? Well, that's the great part about the game because, you know, it's genes will jump generations. And the man breeding to the 500 hour horse has the shot to hit the derby winner because of that. And uh, the great part about horse racing is that when they open the gate, they don't ask, you know, who you're by or who you're out of or where you went to school or how much money you got in the bank. Everybody's equal on the turf and under it. Hmm. <laughs> we will sing one song for my old Kentucky home.